Hello and welcome to ET Auto. In tandem with the global electrification megatrend, consistent efforts are being made in laboratories across the world to develop new battery technology solutions. And one such laboratory is here in the KPIT Technologies headquarters premises in Pune to tell us more about the prospects of new technologies, especially sodium ion technology. We have with us co-founder and chairman of KPIT Technologies, Mr. Rav Pandit. Ravi, thanks for speaking to ET Auto. Thank you, Suman. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, big day that you officially yeah. Yeah. launched yeah. Uh, the yeah. uh, technology of sodium and uh, batteries, yes. which, as you say, has reached a fairly advanced stage. I recall about two years ago, you had said that you were betting on sodium and technology to make the cost of battery which is the second most expensive in uh, yeah, like tech tech vehicle vehicle. Yeah. and non-issue. <laughs> how, how much have you achieved in uh, that target? So I think uh, you have done a lot in that aspect. So, you know, if I were to look at the uh, sodium ion battery uh, that we launched, the technology that we launched today. So it takes care of uh, multiple things. First and foremost, it takes care of what is called as power density. So how can you charge a battery very quickly so that even a small battery can be used in a vehicle and you can charge it multiple times in the day whenever the particular type of usage allows it. See, in the case of a rickshaw or in the case of a bus, you get those types. So in 20 minutes, it should be possible to charge it fully. So that is power at sea. Second is long life. You have to have a very long life. Third is our temperatures are very high. And how do you ensure that the battery survives in those temperatures? without too much of investment in thermal management. That's the third thing. And uh, fourth thing and very importantly now is we are saying that the energy density of sodium ion batteries is now coming very close uh, to the uh, lithium ion batteries. So all of this put together actually makes the cost potentially a down issue. So right. And uh, talk, you mentioned about lithium ion and that was one of uh, uh, unfavorable factor for a sodium ion technology, the energy density. These are my tried and tested technology, considered yes. a workhorse technology for it, especially for the transportation industry. Yes, yes. And therefore the energy de density uh, deficiency compared to lithium ions. Yes, makes it a little bit of an ordeal for sodium ion. So uh, how much have you managed to uh, kind of decrease or reduce the gap? Yeah, so you know when we started, so, so okay, so let's talk about uh, the energy density, which is watt hours per kg, in the case of lithium ion batteries. So, lithium ion batteries are multiple types. There is an NMC battery, which is probably the most expensive, the highest one, which has something like 270 watt hours per kg. The workhorse is not that. The workhorse is the LFP. LFP is around 170 watt hours per kg, which may, most of the people will use and continue to use, other than the highly expensive top end cars. Now, let's fix this number in mind, 170 million. Sodium and batteries, when we started, we were looking at 40, 50. Now we are at 110, 110, no, 100, 110. Actually, there are global companies who have announced vehicles with that watt hour efficiency. We also showcased today 170. We believe that over a period of time, we can cross 200, maybe go up to 200. So essentially what it means is that the difference between an LFP and a sodium ion battery will be non-existent. So which means that we will be able to get the same energy density plus a whole host of other benefits in terms of temperature tolerance, speed of uh, charging, then higher charging window, to lower uh, depth of discharge, all of these will happen. So I think it would be a very good choice along with I think about 30% reduction in cost. That's where, what I was coming to. In, an, in the Indian market context, yeah. uh, cost becomes the most... The uh, most critical factor. factor. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that like to like they could be at the market. Yeah, at least 30% cost advantage. If you were to look at individual raw materials, so in the case of lithium, it is the lithium and cobalt and you know, these materials and you look at the sodium and materials. The raw material cost is like 50-60% though. If you were to put all the costs together, including processing cost, etc., I think sodium and battery will be about 20% cheaper. Okay. That uh, is quite possible. Right. So, and uh, 
so i think that uh, that is really the cost at all or a kilowatt hour basis but since you can charge a sodium ion battery very fast you can have a smaller battery so if you look at the cost for a vehicle that will be significant really. so as that just yes. you know, and if you to look at cost we actually pointed out the battery cost is a large part of cost so if you look at a low end car the battery cost is 30 to 40 percent of the car if you look at a high end car the battery cost is 60 to 70 percent of the cost of the car so you may you imagine the 30 40 percent cut on that cost right and very good yeah and also among with uh, i mean so do you think uh, sodium ion could be a, a game changer uh, not because you are developing it but generally as a technology do you think because uh, absolutely absolutely yeah. see because a couple of things huh? so all the projections about the amount of lithium required if the vehicles go for electrification the way that they are expected to go all those projections show that lithium prices will shoot through the roof all those projections so the world will look for an alternative the world will also look for an alternative from an energy security perspective see everybody wants to work on those materials where they are not dependent on some one or two batteries this was the problem uh, relating to fossil fuel this is the problem relating to lithium and i think sodium can solve that problem which is the reason why you now see global oems european oems coming up with lithium or sodium and batteries but that argument uh, rabi uh, is also kind of changing because lithium reserves are in found uh, in, in india and it's a significant uh, problem in yeah, yeah. so yeah. therefore there is hope that perhaps we not we not be we not have to depend on one or maybe a couple of geographies see if you look at the lithium reserves that we have found in india it would be at least 5 years before we see that lithium mined processed and brought into a battery and the battery coming into the market five years so that is one thing secondly if we were to look at total quantum of lithium reserves across the globe there is bound to be a shortage sodium is 1000 times more abundant as compared to lithium so um as students of economics we all know price depends on the demand and supply higher the supply lower the price simple as that so basically yes so talking about new options being developed uh, uh, new the other options being developed in the world across the world the other thing which a uh, section of industry is really betting on or at could be the in other game changer the metal here specifically aluminum here in fact some of you have the reports so this started trials and are quite bullish about the prospects of that so how do you see that as an option So in, when you not see it fitting in the overall mix, see the way I look at it is that all kind of options we cover, and uh, the world will be better for it. So whoever comes up with your options, uh, good for us. The only point I would like to make is that the the global acceptance for a battery chemistry, top most is lithium, second is sodium, and there are a whole bunch of other things. so even if others come in they will take that much longer because the technology maturity is highest with lithium second highest with sodium and in your case you have pretty sure case uh, launched the technology but how far is it uh, will take uh, or is it so what are we doing so what we are doing is we have already started a uh, joint trials with some customers so this will be like um, where we can show kids the usage of this technology in their specific application area simultaneously we are now started talking to companies who would be doing the licensing of the technology for commercialization so i think it should take about a year for us to come up with maybe a year, year and a half to come up with something which will be available at a reasonably large scale that is what we are doing sometime ago you also showcased what you thought at the india's first in which industry develop hydrogen fuel cell bus uh, yeah. what stage is that project in now okay. and, uh, so actually our technology is very well stabilized now we have delivered one fuel cell project for defense uh, we have delivered one for marine applications so uh, i think now we should start seeing 
a little more traction on there. Uh, these uh, new technology options uh, uh, towards in towards builder transportation and also energy storage solutions. Uh, how could they, as a cluster, how much of a contribution do you think they could make to give their is overall? So you know, our core is our embedded software business, and um, that, as you know, is um, that's what we well. It will continue to be our mainstay. So you can see how these other lines add up. It's your opinion. Lastly, Ravi, uh, what what comes to your mind next? Because as someone who is really so sort of technology focused and really trying to push down for all, uh, I wouldn't uh, expect you to sit sit at <laughs> that. Yeah. Now we see a lot of possibility of growth in batteries uh, and we work on the technologies. We are also seeing very high possibility of growth in the uh, in technology, in fuel cells, and these two weeks of course be there. But as you know, I mean globally the automotive industry is working towards software defined vehicles. And that is a core work area for us. That is where we are doing substantial amount of work with global OEMs define their basic architecture of electrons and that's a big area for us and that growth we try to what i see is uh this decarbonization to make a red and a software realization also kind of offers if i mean call it a level they feel for the entire world yes. the yes. so do you think this is one chance for india to really uh Oh, absolutely, yeah. part not oh, absolutely. You will be at the forefront, especially in, let's say, talk, uh, like talking about uh, battery technologies. Yes, yes, no, no, absolutely. We no, no. see as a big potential, and um, uh, and then we see ourselves having a very critical role in that. What was India do to ensure that this person not? <laughs> yes. So actually, um, I would say that. Um, Almost every major global program on software defined vehicles has KPI in it. Every major. So, um, certainly our company is not going to miss this bus. And uh, we would want to work with uh, Indian companies, Indian OEMs, to bring this technology to them. Because they make the vehicles um, uh, cleaner, smarter, safer. So I think we are making it for a better point. That's how really of it better talk to you. Wish you and the all the very best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for visiting us. Obviously, pleasure to come and you know with us meeting all the developments and have some yes. years chat around technology. So on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this interaction with Mr. Ravi Pandit, co-founder and chairman of KPT Technologies. We spoke about the battery technology specifically. Uh, what could possibly be at the next game changer at this Surya and technology and much more. Hope you enjoyed uh, this, uh, listening to this uh, conversation. Take care until we meet again. Goodbye.